So tonight I thought we'd try looking at some techniques that a lot of beginners struggle with in watercolour. So we're going to be painting on a pretty small scale. So this is, we're using this here, this Archer's pad uh, of uh, 300 GSM, 100% cotton uh, cold pressed paper. It's really, really nice paper. I wouldn't suggest using anything less. That's 300 GSM or 140 pounds. These ones here are 185 GSM or 90 pounds. And they're so thin that if you start wetting them, they, they really won't work very well. So I would suggest using some 300 GSM paper and cold pressed is a good way to go or hot pressed or rough. That doesn't really matter as much as the weight of the paper. And if you can go even weightier than that, even better. And, and as well, what I'd recommend is that you use 100% cotton paper if you can afford that. I know it's more expensive and Archer's paper is pretty expensive, but if you are doing wet in wet and doing multiple layers and you try and use wood pulp paper, again, you're gonna make your life really difficult. And I suppose the beginning, that, that's a thing as a beginner, like if you're using uh, rubbish paints and rubbish paper, it is gonna be harder for you and you might just stop and give up. So you're best off using, working small, but using nice paper and some nice amount of student quality paints like Cotman by Winsor & Newton or other brands is fine, rather than using you know, cheap paper, but then more expensive paints. I think the paper is really, really important. So that's what we'll do tonight. And we'll turn what appears to be a complex sky into some simple work. And I'll try and explain as I go along all the different things that are happening on the page. So let's get started. So I've taped this down onto an MDF board. And the reason why I do that is so that I can tilt this and move it around. And if I wanted you know, it to flow down the page, then I can just do that and tilt it up. But it just, it just means it's very maneuverable and I'm free to do whatever I want. So that's why I do this. The, the other thing is that a lot of people find when they're beginning is working wet in wet is very scary. So they don't go there. But I love watercolor wet in wet and I think that's worth getting used to. So all we're going to do this painting tonight is with two brushes. This is a one inch Holborn hake. I love these Holborn hakes. And I think they're actually better for beginners too because they hold less water than the Ron Ranson ones that I've got and other ones as well, Art Spectrum and other brands that seem to hold a huge amount of water. And that's a good thing sometimes. But these are more controllable when you're painting onto the page. And I think that's for beginners, a good thing. So if you don't have any hakes yet and you're gonna go and buy some, I'd suggest you go and get some Holborn hakes. And by the way, this is not sponsored in any way. This is just me and my recommendations. The other thing I'm gonna paint with is this synthetic sable, because again, for beginners, sometimes you might feel like you need to go out and get a, like a pure Kalinsky sable, like this one here, that'll cost you a lot of money, hundreds of dollars, but you don't really have to. I've painted a fair bit with this uh, sable, this synthetic sable that I got for about $30, and it works really, really well. So you don't need to go out and spend a fortune. So that's what they're the two brushes we'll be using tonight to do this, this painting. The other thing is I've been mixing up my paints and look at this water, you need nice fresh water and you need a decent amount of it. So if you can get a vase, repurpose a vase that normally has flowers and turn it into your watercolor, <laughs> your watercolor supply. And if you're just starting out in watercolor, I suggest you don't paint any larger than this at the beginning really, because, or even smaller, you could put this down on the page like this, and then you could tape it off. You could tape it into, into halves or even into quarters and be working small, which is, builds confidence. So don't feel as though you have to go large at all because that can be scary, uses up more p paint and pigment, and just, you know, you're not gonna learn as fast as if you can work small and repetitively again and again. So that's what I suggest. Don't work any larger than this until you feel really happy. So just so you know how big this is, this is about you know, four to 15 centimeters uh, by 21 centimeters. Just, just so you know how big that is. So if you have a look at this sky here, it looks very complex, doesn't it? You know, and it could be very scary for a painter, but most of the time, all you really need to do when you're starting out in watercolor is just look at the world around you see things that you just love and then have a go painting them. That's a great way to go, no matter what that is. For some people, that'll be industrial landscapes. For some people, that'll be flowers. For some people like me, it'll be skies and seascapes and mountainscapes and you know remote landscapes with no one in it. That's what I love. So the first thing we're going to do is wet the page. And I sometimes, you know, I'm used to painting a lot larger than this. I use a spray bottle quite often, but you can just wet the page with your one inch hake. So we're just gonna use 
these, these two brushes tonight. So we're just going to wet the page. And what I'm doing is that I'm dipping it into the bowl here, wiping it a little bit on the edge, but it's still got a lot of water in it. And then it starts to give that onto the page. And it'll give it to a certain point and then start to move it around. And then when I, I can feel now that it's not full of water anymore, I can go and load it up, wipe a tiny bit on the side, it's still quite full of water again, and I can do this. And if I want to see how much water is on the page, that's hard to tell. You get to know that, but you can look off to the side and see whether there's a sheen there everywhere. And you can also see how much water is on the tape around this. So this is taped down using 3M Magic Tape. All the links for the equipment that I use is in the description below. So all you need to do when you're putting water on is first of all, put on enough. That's the first step. And then when you think you might have put on too much, then what you can do is you can get your, your brush and either flick it out, which is what I do in here, or you could get um, some paper towel and just dab it on it so it just will soak up a lot of that extra water. And then you can run it over the page again to just soak up any extra. And if you have a look at this photo, there, for me, there's a tiny, tiny little bit of warmth coming in here. So all I'm gonna do is just grab a little bit of raw sienna, tiny little bit, okay? And we're just going to bring that in here and a little bit here, just, just with the tip. So I just loaded up a tiny little bit out of this, oh, excuse me. Out of, this is a, like a quite a weak mix of it, okay? I just loaded up the tips like that, just the tips, wipe on the side, and then I just did a little bit across there, okay? Into the, onto the wet paper. Now I'm gonna rinse my brush out. And I could dry this, okay? I could dry this and then wet the whole page again, but let's see if we can just keep working wet in wet. And the beautiful thing about working wet in wet is that it starts to disperse. And this faint color that you can see here that you might think, oh, that's almost nothing, that will still show up. So then what we might do is we might, generally in watercolor, what's good to do is to put in some warms first, then cools. You don't have to do it this way, but it's a good process. Any warms that you see in the photo, put a bit of them down. Then we start looking at sort of the lighter, where the lights are, where we're gonna leave the white of the paper, and also where there are some blues, which in this one, there's a bit of blue here and here and down here. So we're gonna get a little, again, a little bit with the tips. So I'm just gonna load up with the tips again, just a little bit here, like this, wipe on the edge, a little bit on the tips, and I'm just gonna come in, and I'm not gonna be trying to exact, okay? So there's a little bit of a shape there of blue a little bit of blue down here, and maybe a little bit here. It's almost a little bit up into here, tiny little bit here. There we go, done. Now we're gonna rinse our brush out again. And when I rinse my brush out, I'm not like super gentle actually. I don't treat my brushes very well and they still last forever. So I just stomp it out. And the reason why I do that is when sometimes when it's really full, you don't want pigment to be left in it. So again, the other thing is, when I go to load up with color, I would normally flick this out before I load up with color so that it wants to suck that color up into it. If I pick this brush up and it's totally full of water, and then I go to try and load up with pigment, all that's gonna happen is it's gonna dump this water into the bowl and it's gonna, I'm gonna have no control over the amount of pigment that's in this and then what goes onto the page. So once I've rinsed it out, I always flick a bit unless I want to keep that water in there. I'll flick a bit or you could dab it somewhere. But I've got to also work a bit fast. I'm talking too much because this is drying. All the time this is drying and then I'm going to be a bit stuffed because you've got a window of opportunity. So I'm going to load up with a little bit of this um, mixture of cobalt blue and light red. And again, I'm getting a little bit more now because I'm going to go a bit heavier. And so all I'm going to do is start coming where these darker clouds are. So darker clouds in here, come across here a bit, and it's going a bit dry, I've talked a bit too much. <laughs> and we're just going to put in these dark shapes, a little bit more dark here, coming in here like this. We're not gonna worry about exactly where the sea is yet. We can bring in a little bit here, a little bit more here, and a little bit more coming in down here. Like this, a bit more up here, very. What I might do is I might just rinse my brush out now. Rinse my brush out. Again, flick it out. I don't want to dump water. If I dumped water onto that page right now, look, look what would happen. So I'll get that. It's full of water. Let's just see what happens here. If I dump that onto there right now, you might not see something immediately, but look what's happening on the page now, this cauliflower. 
See, the water is moving into this pigment here and it's creating all these marks. And if you want them, that's fine. But a lot of people have these happen to them and they don't really want them. So that's why if I'm starting to move my pigment around, I don't want it full of water, okay? So I can start to move some things around. So all I'm doing is just, um, I've got a damp brush now, so I've got a damp brush. I, I can take a little bit of the water out, but I'm just trying to move a little bit of this. So, so just blend it a bit. So just because it's damp, it's starting to move this pigment here a little bit, and then I can start to put it down a little bit over here. And if I want, I think, oh, I want a bit more dark. So I can either... Um, get a different color, I could get more concentrated pigment of this. So see how this is going to be darker right here? I haven't really mixed this properly. <laughs> but if I get a bit of a darker tone and bring this in even darker, I should have mixed this a bit better. So even darker, see? So I can bring in now some even darker darks and I should have been doing this uh, earlier. <laughs> I'm running out of time here because I'm going to create some hard edges which is not really what I want. So I'll just put a little bit in there and, and that'll do. So I rinse that out and take a bit of the water out again, take a bit of the water out, and then I'm just going to feather this a bit. So what I mean by feathering is that this brush is damp, it's not really wet, but it's not dry, and it can start to pick some of this pigment up. And you don't want to do too much of this because you want to let the watercolor do its lovely thing. But because I've been talking too much and it's been drying a bit on the edges, it, it hasn't done quite as much movement as I might have wanted. I can start to do a little bit of that sort of thing here. There we go. And you can do more and more layers if you wanted. Flick it out and I can just disturb some of these bits if I want to. Beautiful. That will do, we're just keeping this nice and simple. So we've just used a little bit of raw sienna, a little bit of cobalt blue, and then the mix of cobalt blue, light red coming in, and then that's it, we're, we're done. So what we're gonna do now is we're just going to dry around the edges so that when we're drying it with a hairdryer, which again is a great tool, I think, when we're drying it with a hairdryer, we don't blow any of that back in. So let's just dry this. So that's the other lovely thing about working small is it doesn't take long to paint, doesn't take long to dry. You move on to the next step. It's a, it's a really lovely way to work. So the, the next step, we could do this in a number of ways. If you have a look at the photo now, we can see there's some sea here, which we didn't want. We wanted to paint the sky down into the sea. It's a really great way to go because then they connect together. You're not trying to stop short. You, painting your brush strokes all the way through. And also means some light that's here might be reflected, the colors might be reflected, which is a nice thing too. So then we decide where the horizon is, and you could free, freehand paint this in without taping it off, but if you want a nice straight horizon, and you're using, you know, say, Archer's paper, you can use this 3M, oh, that's the, use a 3M tape, the 3M Magic tape that we use to stick it down with, and we choose where we want the horizon, and then we just put it down here, and we press down. Now, I did a demo the other day, and the paint came underneath, so you have to make sure the paper is definitely dry, and the way you can tell that is if you press it down, and it is flat down onto the board, then you know it's dry. If there's any sort of, uh, if it's risen up at all, and when you press down, it, it has some way to go before it presses down onto the board, you know it's not dry yet. So. Make sure it's completely dry. It's another beginner's mistake that you, they don't dry it at all between layers or you don't, or we dry it a little bit but not enough. So dry it completely. Then we put this tape down on this Archer's tape. If you're using softer paper, you might need to use the removable tape, but that will let some paint underneath quite often. So again, there's lots of ways of doing this, but we're going to use this synthetic sable now, and we're just going to paint in the sea. And again, we could use 
different colors, but we're just gonna keep this nice and simple. We're gonna use this mix of cobalt blue, light red, and I might just throw in a tiny little bit of cobalt turquoise, but you, would, you don't need to do that at all. So also what's good to do is to squint your eyes a bit and see where are the dark darks. And here, there's a really dark dark here, really dark dark here. And then there's a bit of dark dark coming in here, which is the, the foreground, which is the land. Uh, and there's some dark dark above the horizon that we'll do later, just here, which is land again. And then there's a fair bit of light all here. So the, but it still has color and tone, but it's just lighter here. So there's, there's a few ways that we could do this. What's probably a good way to go is to come in with it light first, the light tone first, and then charge, we call charging when it's already wet, to charge this area with a darker dark. So uh, if we get a lighter sort of tone, what we can do if we wanted to, we could kind of dry brush. And that's where you have a brush, it's not too fully loaded. And you can try on another piece of paper first. Let's just try another piece of arches here. So you could just try on another piece of paper that's the same sort of surface and just try brushing your brush gently across the surface. And you can see that you end up getting that, that mark just touching the, the surface, but not touching anywhere else. So you could test that if you wanted to, to make sure it's about right. And it's gonna have a bit less pigment now, but that's okay. We can just come in and just dry brush across, not be too worried, not be too exact. Bit darker over here, and then we just get a bit more of this, and we can just charge this area here with the dark dark. So we just got our sable, picked up a bit more pigment, and we just, it's the same color, it's just there's more pigment in the brush and it's stronger. So we just charge that area. And then if we wanted to get a dark dark, I can get a, this mix of winds of blue, red shade and light red, or we could have just used more of the same, but we'll make it a different tone here, okay? So we'll just, you could use any sort of Payne's gray or dark dark. And the important thing is my mix there was a bit too thick. So it's dry brushing over the top. If you wanna do a line, and it not dry brush, you need a little bit more water in the brush. So we'll just do that. We could do any shape we wanted there. You know, whatever the, sh the, the sort of the, f the foreground, whatever it looks like. And I think we're almost done. If we wanted to charge that a tiny bit more with a little bit more dark, then we could, but let's just leave that for now, okay? So all we're going to do now is lift this uh, tape off and sometimes what you might need to do is you might need to uh, use the hairdryer to heat up the adhesive so it doesn't tear the paper. What we can do as well is if we want to see this a bit more easily, we can get our sable and just uh, wet these edges that have dried a bit here and then wipe them away and then wet here. It's a nice thing about using tape on the edges because then you get a nice white border, which means that you sort of, you know, you get to see. And what I should do is wipe this way because if I wipe this way, I might wipe this dark into the paper there. So we'll wipe this way and then lovely. And then all we're going to do is just put in that little bit of land mass. So again, we're gonna use the tape again. Actually, before we do that, I've gotta dry this. So this is still wet. You can see it's, ri it's risen up. So it's still wet. And before you go putting tape onto that, it needs to be completely dry. So let's just continue drying and really dry this thoroughly, okay? So the last step in this is for us to put in another piece of this 3M Magic Tape and we can decide where we put this. But for this, what I'm gonna do is just put the tape exactly where the horizon finishes. So again, I press in the top and then again, I'm gonna use a similar tone to this foreground, but I'm gonna make it a tiny, even though in the 
picture in the photo, this was equally, to me, was equally dark to this. I'm going to make it a tiny bit less than this so that we get a little bit of recession, that feeling of recession and that, because that's what happens generally as things recede or get further away, they get a bit bluer and a little bit more faded. So we'll just grab a little bit of this Windsor Blue Red Shade Light Red mix and we'll just weaken it off a bit. And you could sketch in if you wanted to, okay? You could sketch in what you wanted this to look like. And I'm just laying in like a flat wash here of this. And again, if I thought, oh no, that's not as strong as I wanted, all I need to do is pick up a little bit more pigment and then I can just bring it in. It's very easy, it's much easier to darken an existing bit of watercolour than it is to lighten it really. And then if I wanted to make it a little bit interesting, I could think, well, where's the light coming from? And just do a little bit of light catching that, that a little bit. Even though it's not in the photo, you, you, again, you can tiny little bit, see tiny little bit off, and it is just catching the light. Again, if I wanted to change that, I could come back with my brush and change that. So let's just, uh, I might not have dried underneath this quite as well as I should have. Anyway, let's just get, use the hair, let's just use the hair dryer and um, we'll, we'll take this tape off. It just goes to show how important it is to thoroughly dry your paper. Again, it seemed pretty dry, but it still didn't stick completely. A little bit came underneath. But it's a good excuse for me to show you guys another technique, which is to use a metal ruler and put it where you want to scratch out a bit of a light, which for here will be on the horizon. And I'll just scratch out a little bit of a light here, into here. Nice, and if I wanted to again, I could scratch out a little bit below. So I'm just using, this is just a scalpel, like a, like a um, Stanley razor blade. That's all it is. So it's like that. And all I'm doing is just using the tip part and a metal ruler, which is a good way to go. And I'm just scratching it back and forth. So it's not flat, it's not right up. And I'm just scratching back and forth a bit to create a bit of a line. And if I wanted, which is in the photo actually, I could do a little line right on the horizon. So this is an easy way. You put it this way so you can see where the horizon is. And there's a nice bit of light in that photo right here. Nice, let's just... Let's just make that a little bit stronger. And then you can do freehand if you'd like. And what's also good is to just step back a little bit. and see what you like, what you don't like, what you think needs doing, because really you can use the photo as a reference, but it doesn't mean your painting can't evolve as it goes along and you take it down a slightly different path if you want to. The other thing that's very hard to see in this photo, but it's quite nice, is that there's a little tiny little bit of detail off in the distance, a little tiny little bit of, and they're actually, um, it's a port in Sydney here. And so there's a little tiny little bit of, some structures there off in the distance just back there and that again sometimes can make a really nice subject because you know a lot of people's eyes will be coming to this point around here and to give it something to rest on would probably be a nice thing so again you're better off going too light initially and then seeing how that goes and then and then going a bit darker so again i could tape this off if i wanted to and I could also do a pencil sketch if I wanted to. And I could just make sure that it's not too loaded so it doesn't just suddenly dump all of that onto the page.
And in that photo, that light is just coming straight across and just taking a little bit of that out. Beautiful. So it could be anywhere or anything really right there. Beautiful. So we'll just finish this by drying it completely. And then at the end, you could sign it if you wanted to. You've got to figure out what your, um, what your signature is going to look like. And so that's the end of this painting. It's then good when you're finished to take the tape off so that then you can see you know, what it looks like. It's even good if you've got it to have a bit of a mat board so that you can put it around it and then really see what that finished painting is, is going to look like if, if you got it framed. So if we just get this mount board here and we put it around this painting, it just helps us to see what is that going to look like when it gets framed. And sometimes it's good to use a mount board, put it on, you know, stick it down on the MDF board that you're using and then take that away and put it up on the wall so you can see what it looks like from a distance. And see the dark darks and the light lights and what needs strengthening. And, and so for me it could be that I could make this horizon a bit stronger, a bit darker, you know, to make that a bit more of a subject rather than this being a subject too much, you know, so I could darken off here to bring the eye more into here and just, just spray that out a little bit potentially. But it's all great. So. Thanks guys, thanks for joining me in this beginner's tutorial in landscape. I know that there's some processes here, but really, once you learn how watercolor works, then working wet and wet is exciting, not scary. It's really fun, it's what watercolor is all about. And skies is just, just lends itself to working wet and wet. So thanks for joining me tonight. If you like this video, please press like, and if you want to know about future videos, then press the subscribe button and press the bell button. And if you want more help with your watercolors, you want to learn how to paint, from beginning to end, then you can join me on Patreon. I have some courses on there that takes you step by step through the whole process of learning watercolors in this way. So thanks very much guys for joining me and I'll see you next week. Good night.